Welcome everybody to the ANSYS Innovation Conference for 2021. I'm your host, Dave Firth, and I'd like to welcome you here um, virtually, unfortunately, uh, because of the COVID situation. I wish we could all be together. Unfortunately, I appreciate the time that you're taking here today to learn more about ANSYS. For those who may not know me, my topic, uh, first of all, my name is Dave Firth. I am the Area Vice President for Japan and Korea. Uh, and for those that want to know what I'm going to speak about today, I'd like to speak about what is ahead with ANSYS. Where are we going as a company, who we are, and how things have changed, especially over the last several years. So the first thing I'd like to cover is who we are. I'd like to talk a little bit about the simulation as a market leader. I'd like to talk a little bit about our strength in the market and why simulation is becoming so important. I'd like to also focus a little on our how we're capitalizing on it as a company and then talk about our execution. And then I'll share a slide at the end talking specifically about some of the direction we are taking from a strategic standpoint. And I think it's important if you stay to the end to get that type of information. So who we are, I think most of you know that we do in our core simulation, but did you know we are the largest simulation supplier out there? Um, and our next competition in simulation is twice, the, we're twice that size, they're twice as small as we are. And I kind of wanted to make sure you understand that we are focused, we're capable. We have 4,800 plus and counting employees all here to help you come to market with our products. I'd like to also mention that we have a lot of customers. Actually, we have over 45,000 customers. And we learn a lot working with those customers just as much as they learn from us. And if you're here today and you're one of these customers, I thank you for letting us use your symbol as part of our partnership that we're working together with. I'd also like to point out of partnerships that we have with some other software suppliers, such as Microsoft, PTC, Rockwell Automation, Autodesk, and Synopsys. We partner with these folks in different ways so that we have a leading solution to bring to you as a customer. I want to take a moment to talk about our technology stack. Most of you are familiar with the System V. So let's start at the top left-hand side of that System V and talk about the system of systems. And what I mean by that is if we were to take a car that has to drive through the city autonomously, how do we do that? How do we simulate that car with that scenario going through a city? And then let's add on top of that, that that car has to now speak with a lot of 5G antennas. And eventually, as we all know, we will be moving the 6G antennas. And those will be a phased array, so they might be a different behavioral pattern than you'll see on the car. Then you'll see on 5G, excuse me. So now you have a vehicle traveling through, let's say a city or some scenario where it's gonna have people, it's gonna have traffic, it's going to also have all kinds of data being processed. And that has to still maintain communication. And the, with your 6G phone, people are gonna expect that as they're riding in this vehicle. Um, how do we do that? How do you simulate that? And that's the type of solutions we're looking at whether it's a drone flying over a city. Uh, so as you prepare these, what we call scenarios or missions, there's a lot of engineering that is involved there. And not only that, as you're designing that product to handle that type of mission, it has, you may have different parts of that product coming from different suppliers and they may have to give you designs or encrypted behavioral patterns of how that, vehicle or uh, that mission needs to be accomplished, what's part of that uh, uh, device is some other person's technology and they have to hand that to you. They have to hand that off. 
So now you have all of these models acting together as part of your scenario for your simulation on that mission. And then you want accuracy. You want that solver accuracy, that capability that we have. And then you may even try out different materials. As you can see, as we move down that system stack, we have solutions for every portion of that. Now, a couple of key things to note. We are not asking you to replace wholesale some of your other system solutions and things that you may have to help with this problem. We are an open tool set. We will work with other vendors. We will uh, incorporate, you can incorporate our technology to augment that solution. And that's how we're bringing our products to market. And I think that's important. And the second thing is, is as you can tell, this is going to take an enormous amount of computational horsepower. And in order to get that done, we have to be able to provide that to you. And so that's some of our partnerships uh, today. We're working with them to be able to deliver these type of full solution sets to you and help you integrate as you're facing those challenges for tomorrow. I'd like to kind of say, this isn't your father's ANSYS. We've now been here 40 years and we expect to be here a long time after, but it's certainly a lot different ANSYS than probably what you're used to. And I think we, we hope that we can engage with you on many of these type of solution sets in your organization. And what is it that we actually bring at the end of the day? What is it that we can bring you? Our hope, our goal is to bring you additional rather revenue growth, make you successful in the market. At the same time, being able to save costs, whether it's materials, whether it's time to market, whether it's building a lot less prototypes, that's the key to simulation in your organization. The second thing I wanna talk about is the simulation market itself. Why is it growing? How do we view the simulation market? Well, we see four major things happening today. The first is a very disruptive market as it stands with technology. Technology is coming out faster and faster, much more complex. If you look at just electric vehicles, for instance, that wasn't even a topic almost 10 years ago was sort of a niche thing. Today, Tesla has a higher market capitalization than Ford or General Motors. Electric vehicles are coming. And that is a big game-changing, disruptive opportunity in the marketplace for those that can take advantage of it. And those, again, are the solutions that we're trying to bring, whether it's 5G. Perhaps in another year or two, it's going to be 6G. All of these things are being discussed as I'm presenting this. And of course, automation inside industrial products, industrial automation, the internet of things. It's, it's pervasive out there. We see all of these things as very disruptive in the marketplace. And that is causing, as we said, just tremendous complexity. Products aren't the same as they used to be anymore. There are so many things going on, so much software, so much hardware, so much technology involved in products and their complexity, you need their simulation tools. You can't do without them to invent that next disruptive product. And of course, as engineers, you need to be more efficient. You have to uh, be able to design faster, harder, easier. Uh, you, you have to have those solutions ready because that pressure is on you every day. And we understand that. And the last thing that really moves our market is, yes, while some of this stuff has been around, what hasn't been around is the computational horsepower. We all know that the current cell phone today has more horsepower, more computational horsepower than all the shuttle uh, computers that were used for the shuttle landings uh, just 30 years ago. You're carrying more computational horsepower than the IBM mainframes of the 70s. It's incredible. And it's becoming less expensive, ergo helping simulation be more pervasive in the design cycle. 
So what is our strategy? How are we capitalizing on this growing market? You know, first of all, we believe that simulation is pervasive all the way from the creation of an idea, all the way to you thinking, what if? What if I could do this? Can I do that? And it's a little bit more than back on a napkin nowadays. We have products that allow you to even think about that quickly. And we call that discovery. So at the idea phase, at the thought phase, can I do those things? We think simulation is going to be there and used. And we see our customers doing that today. All the way through the product design cycle, all the way to maintaining equipment at the end of the day. I deal with customers that have blowout preventers that are miles underneath the ocean. And they got to know whether those blowout preventers will work or not. And where the measurements should be and how quickly should it shut. And that is a huge safety issue. And of course, they're using IoT. They're now monitoring things that they couldn't do before for the safety. So all the way through the whole product life cycle, simulation is now being used. And so fundamentally, as we understand that, now we know we need to invest in our core, our core technologies. They have to be accurate. And if we don't have them, or if we're needing some more accuracy, we're going to ensure that we get there. And I guarantee you that that is the lifeblood of ANSYS. That is what we do. And as we bring those solution sets, we need to expand. We know that. We need to go up the stack. We need to look at hardware in the loop. We're, we're through that whole process of design, all the way from system, system ML, all the way to HIL. It's incredible how much simulation is now used in that product life cycle. And we're the ones that look to see and, and provide that for you. So that means to us, number one, number one of everything is accuracy. It's no good having simulation if one, you don't set up the problem correctly. So you need that close technical partnership. And number two, if you're not accurate, and if anybody says that it's all one physics or a separate physics, no, that's, that's not how the world behaves. You and I know that. It's multi-physics. Just a simple parachute out dropping is a multi-physics solution. There are so many multi-physics solutions, and we have to make sure that all of them work together. And we've been doing that now for years, years. And, and we have the way any time to ability to bring it all together. And, and then we have the core, we have more PhDs in this company than any I've ever worked with. And I don't know if there's a measurement out there, but more than likely most companies out there on this planet today, ANSYS has a lot of experts and they're there to help you with these advanced methods and help you roll out that technology. So, do we have that proven execution? You bet we do. Look at the performance. And, and why is this important to you? Because you need to know that your grandchildren are still going to be here using ANSYS products. We're going to be here 100 years from now. When I first talked about not your father's simulation, you need to know that this will be here for your grandkids. And it's the way we execute. It's what we do and how precisely we do it. We allocate our properly, our capital properly. We, if you look at our financials, they are very solid. And that's important. You need to understand, we're not gonna leave anybody in the dust. We're gonna be right there with you. So let's quickly talk about some of our long-term strategy. Thank you for staying with me this long in the presentation. Now, let me share a few things about where we're going in the long-term. I won't go over every one of these due to the time, but certainly as you go through this technology uh, conference, please ask questions, stop by on a virtual basis and see all the things that we're working on. But the one question maybe a lot of you may have is, is what is ANSYS doing in artificial intelligence and machine learning? And I'll tell you, we have our whole CTO staff uh, there's quite a few people specifically focused in this area. 
from an AI perspective, as you're using our tools, we like to collect some data and work with you to see how do we make our interfaces more intelligent? How do we anticipate what you're doing? And then where else can we use AI? So AI, if you start thinking about, can be done all along that same process. And meanwhile, there's a ton of data being collected, both in the production phase, post, post phase, how can we take that machine learning, as we call it, that data, and bring it back into the simulation cycle? So those are things that are very near and dear. We have some things right now to talk about. So make sure you talk to the folks at ANSYS to understand more about what we're doing. Now, let's talk about the multi-physics solutions and problems. Most companies 10 years ago would have a guy doing mechanical, a guy doing fluids, a guy doing electrical, and everybody had their desktop. We knew that as we were doing multi-physics, it's gotta be more of a platform-based across the enterprise type solution. And as you bring in other technology that you may have in your enterprise, you need to connect to our database and you need to connect to our solvers. And we are forming APIs and things like that that are gonna be open and have you have the ability to be able to do that. Very exciting work. And I just wanna to, um, touch base a little bit about uh, the, uh, what we're doing in the acceleration uh, phase. We have to look at other ways of computing. There is no doubt about it. And we're constantly, as you well know now, GPUs, uh, you know, uh, large server farms, those type of things we're already invested in. Our products already work there. But what about quantum computing? Where are we with that? I can tell you we are focused on it. We are working and partnering, that's all I can say, with some of the best minds in the industry on quantum computing to ensure that as we roll out these more sophisticated solutions, you're gonna have the horsepower to solve those problems accurately, which is a really big case. So I just wanna point out a few of these. You can read this, you can pause your screen right now, but I certainly want you to take a look at what we're doing and please be excited. I'm excited. I hope you're excited with our technology. And I just want to thank you for joining the ANSYS Innovation Conference for 2021. Take care and have a fantastic day. Thank you.